Hi, Cindy here. And I'm learning and since I'm learning German, I thought I'd hopefully help give English learners a leg up. I know I'm speaking in English, but hopefully if you're watching this video, you're probably pretty good at English. <laughs> But yeah, not even Eng native English speakers are as perfect at English. <laughs> Honestly, we're not. Even I make mistakes sometimes. <laughs> With my own native language that I've been speaking for 19 years. <laughs> and then there are some rules that we don't even know. We just got used to them since we speak English our whole life lives. So, without further ado, here I go. And I'm getting this off of... Uh, Oxford site, so I'm going to be reading this off the website. Yet, yeah, seven rules of English language. Seven rules of the English language that most native speakers don't know. That versus which. Many native English speakers think that and which can be used interchangeably, or they think which should be used because it sounds more formal. This is not the case. The rule is that that defines which informs or adds extra information. Take the following for example. This is the cake that I made. This cake, which Tom made, looks better. Now, the first sentence that is used to define the cake as being one made by me. The second sentence refers to a second cake that looks better than mine. With uh, a bit of extra information added, which Tom made. So it's like that. And then ordering your sentences. A lot of English speakers are just used to this. Like, we never had to really learn about the uh, sentence order in English because we're just so used to it. Yeah, unlike that in which some of the rules of English grammar are used correctly by English speakers, but purely by instinct rather than through any concrete knowledge of the rules behind their usage. A good example of this is the way in which we order our sentences when using multiple adjectives. Many, no, English speakers just know which order to put them in and know that the wrong order sounds odd, but they don't consciously know the rule behind this, which is that adjectives should be ordered thus. Opinion, size, age, shape, color, origin, material, purpose, noun. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a native English speaker, and I'm not even going to be able to remember, remember that. <laughs> so, if you're studying English, just try to focus on phrases and not the actual sentences. Like, and not the actual grammar rules of the sentence order, because I'm a native English speaker, and I would not be able to tell you why we put the certain words where we put them in our sentences. I'm not a teacher either, I'm just a 19-year-old trying to give non-native English speakers and just hoping to give them a bit more confidence because not even native English speakers get this stuff correct. And then like versus such as. A common mistake among English speakers is to use such as and then like interchangeably. Or more commonly to use like when such as should be used. This is another instance where in which there is a rule that most native speakers aren't aware of. It is like excludes, such as it includes. Use such as when you're giving examples of something, and like when you want to express similarity. Let's look at a couple of examples. Celebrities like George Clooney and Angela Jolie are your, used to being photographed. Celebrities such as George Clooney and Angela, Angelina Jolie are used to being photographed. In the first sentence, we're talking about any celebrity on par with Clooney and Jolie. Not necessarily these two specific actors, just ones like them. In the second sentence, we're using them as specific examples of actors who are used to being photographed. And then, four. A common slip up as versus since. A common slip up among native speakers is to use as and since interchangeably. They use since instead of because, as in, I'm not going to the party since he is going. This is incorrect. The rule is as is casual, since is temporal. Think of since as being linked to time. A correct example of the use of since is, it's been years since I've ridden a horse. As can be used in a place of because, for example, I'm not going to the party as he is going. I'm not 
going to the party because he is going. This is particularly important. This is a particularly important rule to remember when you're writing essays. Don't be tempted to replace because with since, just because you want to vary your wording a bit more. And then number five is something that I even have trouble with: the ed versus nt endings. Many native speakers are unsure whether a word should be should end in ed or nt. Should it be learned or learnt? For example, the rule is that ed is a past tense form, nt is an adjectival form. For example, she learned the mu she learned the music. It's correct because we're talking about an action, the learning taking place in the past. An example of the adjectival form of the verb to learn would be learned behavior, as opposed to innate or instinctive behavior. Another example of this rule is burned versus burnt. She burned the dinner versus the dinner the dinner is burnt. And then, yeah, a lot of Americans and British people and Australians also have trouble with when to use capital letters, which is proper nouns, the names of people and places, and then the official brand names of things. And then in titles and headings, always. And then at the beginning of the sentence, obviously. And then abbreviations and acronyms, like U USA would all be capitalized, CIA, all capitalized, and then formatting dates. Most day, and then number seven, formatting dates. Many in, may, many native English speakers know that when you're referring to a date in history, you write BC before Christ or AD. I know Domini. I never knew the AD part, but I knew that it, we're in 2016 AD <laughs> to to signify that it occurred before. Or after the year zero, the year in which Christ was born, but not many know that BC goes after the day while AD goes before it. I didn't know that! <laughs> See, as I'm making this video, I'm actually learning new stuff about my own language. <laughs> Confusion over how to format dates also extends to how to write individual dates. <sighs> in UK English. Yeah, this is off of a UK. An English site. But if you're trying to learn English, I guess it's okay. I guess it's good for you to know every form of English. Is it the 15th of October? 15 October, 15th October, October the 15th. If we're going to allow you probably say the 15th of October. So if you're mentioning a date in writing, however, it's best to put 15th October or 15 October. But in American English, you'll say October 15th always. The only date where we usually say it the way the rest of the world probably even says dates is the 4th of July. Independence Day, which is coming up. <laughs> Actually, as I record this video. <laughs> so yeah. If any native English speakers <laughs> watch this video, I'm sure you learned some new things about your own language like I did. Like, I didn't know you put the AC, AD before the year and the BC after the year. Well, I knew you put the BC after the year, but I didn't know you put the AD before the year. So, it would technically be AD 2016. <laughs> this year, so. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> or maybe that's just British English, I don't know. English is just so weird because there's because there's Canadian English, Australian English, British English, and American English. <laughs> so I don't know. But yeah, and if you're learning English, I hope you I hope you learn stuff about the English language, and hopefully I hopefully I made you more confident in your English learning because it's always fun to learn different languages. That's why I'm trying to learn German right now. <laughs> Even though I live in the U.S., I'm probably not going to be able to use German that much. Oh, wow. It's still a fun language to learn. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and hopefully you learned something like I did. <laughs> because I actually didn't know some of those things, so... <laughs> Bye!